Welcome back to another episode of Head to Head. Me and Reinforce yet again debating more Overwatch. Uh, today we're going to talk about the Atlanta Rain and specifically their damage dealers. Uh, we just get the news that uh, Baby Bay uh, done uh, retiring. Sad news, I think, for us uh, overall. Yeah. But uh, you know, I think I think we kind of expected it after what he said after the last tournament. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what this changes for Atlanta, Johnny. Yeah, I mean, this obviously is a big shakeup for this team because Baby Bay has such, been such a central part of this team throughout the entire year. I mean, going into the year, I think most of us ex actually expected Baby Bay to ride the bench, but yeah. he's actually been like the one consistent starter on this team because of his Ash play, McCree play, etc. And so it's... It's going to be a weird transition now when Baby Bay is gone. Like, is it going to affect the shot calling? Yeah. Who's going to fill his role, etc. So a lot of in the air for the Atlanta Rain. Well, I think to kind of preface the argument, it's like Baby Bay has played his best as of late. Yeah. I mean, this is when we've really seen him at his best uh, is over the last few weeks. So I think to lose him is massive. And Going forward, I just don't know what you exactly you do. I think the natural solution or what feels right would be Erster and Edison. But yeah. do you do you really want Edison on that hit scan type of role in like your Ash and your Widowmaker? Or is that something uh Sharp can pick up? So I think it's actually a very complicated issue because you have to sort out the roles too, mind you. Because when we say that Edison will just fill his shoes, right? That would involve heroes like Ash, yes. like McCree, like Widowmaker, right? Which we know that he is capable of doing. But then the question becomes, okay, well, would you want to put Erster on a role like Tracer and Genji where he can flex on both of those? I think that would probably be optimal. But then you go like, well, Edison has actually like popped pretty hard on Tracer throughout the season. So do you want someone like Sharp to perhaps fill in that role on Ash and Widowmaker and uh, those kind of heroes instead? So I want to hear your opinion on Sharp, actually, because he hasn't had a ton of playtime throughout the year. And I, I have an opinion on Sharp, okay? Yeah. I am the Swedish so, guy. So I have an opinion, but what, what is yours? What I know of Sharp and what I've heard of Sharp, because uh, mind you, like we we don't get a chance to watch a ton of contenders. Uh, maybe you guys do. You know, you and Josh, you guys don't got shit to do during the day, so you guys. I mean, I, I'm the one answering all the. I'm recording chat. content, Matt. Yeah. I have things to do. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm the one that's answering all the emails that go to Plat Chat, so <laughs> I, I got to do that all day. But uh, from what I do know, and from what the minimal I've seen, is that uh, he's got a very good tracer and a Widowmaker which I think both of those heroes kind of slot in well. Uh, in terms of, like, is it Baby Bay level? I'm not sure. Because uh, from what we've seen from Baby Bay is at the Overwatch League level. From what we've seen from Sharp, primarily, has just been at Contenders. Uh, so you just don't know how well he will play in the Overwatch League. Uh, but I, I, I'm excited. That I think they should give him run. I think for yep. them to just kind of sit on Erster and Edison and have somebody who's a specialist at two heroes that are very strong and prominent in the meta just kind of sit on the bench. Uh, I think that would just be kind of dumb. Uh, yeah. Where I think you'll see Sharp get some play, I think he should as well. Yeah, I mean, I certainly think so. I think that Sharp is actually, like, pretty underrated and just hasn't had, like, a proper position on this team and therefore hasn't really gotten any of that play time. I think he played, like, one or two matches... And he was like forced to play really minimal play or something I guess like the valiant or something like two three months ago and they actually got reverse swept by the valiant in his <laughs> debut match so that was like obviously a very hard good. match for him to come into this team and start performing but most of my experience with sharp actually comes from playing with him on team sweden back in 2018 right and that was also a bit of a difficult time for me to start playing with him because it was like a sombra meta and we tried to force sombra onto him and i I don't know if he's developed that Sombra since, but I don't think that Sombra was a hero that necessarily suited him, the way he played the game, the way he thought about the game, where it's like you have to be very aware of the, like, the positioning and like when you engage with your team, etc., and all of that playmaking ability where someone like Sherfor would excel in that role, right? right? So I think that Sharp primarily is really good at roles like oh. Ash, McCree, Widowmaker, and I d really do think that when Sharp comes out and plays his best game, He's capable of bringing it to some players, maybe like Linkser, BQB, sort of in that area of his gameplay. Uh, I was going to say, is he, do, do you think it's a big downgrade from uh, Baby Bay to Sharp? I mean, that depends on play style too, right? Because Baby Bay, <laughs> 
he has one hell of a play style where he aggressive. runs all around the map. Yeah, it's very aggressive and a bit he'll all over the place. Anybody. Sometimes, yeah, he challenge people. Sometimes he'll feed, etc. Whereas Sharp, I'm a bit interested to see how he would fit into that role. I could almost see Sharp come into this team and be a bit too passive in that regard because Sharp has mm. insane mechanics, but I don't know if he would be able to fill that role as much as uh, baby a, babe plays it well so you know the mechanics are there but it's the playstyle there yeah i wonder if it kind of ruins anything from atlanta from a playstyle perspective of like pace of play and now because i mean a lot of their stuff in in the past from what we've seen especially ash and like widow was like baby bay getting a lot of those first picks right oh yeah being Just aggressive doing, like, weird shit yeah yeah a different angles uh without that type of person putting pressure and opening things up who is that player now uh yeah. who who is that one that does that for the atlanta rain i, I would say edison but yeah. if you if you're gonna play erster you're moving off edison on the uh roles that he would be able to pop off and do that you would think yeah uh I so mean, the, the question also is matt have we overestimated erster's impact on this roster like they had a great stage four last year oh. but can erster actually is erster actually as good as we make him believe to be. I, because we've hyped up so many other players. We hyped up so many other players in the league that just disappointed. I and believe has to he live is. up to the hype. Is Erster one of those? I, I believe Erster is as good as we imagine and as we've seen. Uh, it's just he's been forced into a horrible position. Uh, he, he's a player who's extremely flexible. He can play all the high impact heroes at a really nice level. Uh, and then they stick him on May. And, you, yeah. he, and what? He plays. Imagine how horrible of an experience it would be as a player. <laughs> <laughs> to just to just play Temple of Anubis in May. That's it. That's it. <laughs> All he did. No, you're right. All you're right. Did. Yeah. Uh, if you but... were trying to kill motivation in a player, that's what you would do to them. You, th th those would literally be the two things you would tell them. You'd be like, hey, guess what? You're going to play only May and 2CP and that's it. And you'd be like, okay, well, sweet, I'm out. Uh, so I think you've kind of ruined a little bit of his drive, potentially. Where I think now... Yeah, maybe. You can use this, I think what they should do is use this as an opportunity to give him more of that power back. Uh, be more of a powerful impact player for the team. Don't hide the guy. We know how tremendous he can be. Uh, he needs to be a focal point of this team now. Uh, do you yeah. think they get worse without Baby Bay? I mean, nothing else about this team has really sold me on them looking too good. Uh, because when I would review them, I mean, their front line is actually pretty bad and we've actually overestimated how good the front line is and then you have dogman not having the best performances on batiste etc and fire playing a brig that's not like you know it's not the highest impact role either unless you're shutting down genji <sighs> so there's nothing that inspires confidence here for me matt i almost want to say something that would just be a mega hot take that i, mean, that's I what think you're here for, right? yeah that i think okay i'm gonna preface it like this the way you looked at some of the retirements that we've seen this year uh Sinatra obviously retiring is a huge blow to the shock and the league, but the shock were obviously able to withstand it. They had a very talented roster. Sinatra wasn't playing a lot at the time. It, it wasn't that big of a hit, right? Uh, Corey leaving the justice, uh, you know, not, nothing saves the justice. Nobody saves nothing the justice. Saves, yeah. Corey wasn't yeah. saving the justice on his own. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, the, the the justice they could uh they could bring in the shock they'd probably still be bad i mean just it just seems like it's all <laughs> all gone around for washington uh baby bay retiring and leaving atlanta has a chance to be more impactful in a negative way than either of those were for those teams that that's how because i think when you look at atlanta and how they played this year what baby bay has probably been their their second brightest spot or brightest spot debatably yeah right yeah it's him and edison him and Edison have been the bright spots for the team. So I think losing him is so impactful for this roster that they were already kind of like teetering on getting it together and falling apart. I hope this doesn't send them towards the falling apart. So I actually, I, I will take, I, I agree with you to an extent, but I will take the, uh, the opposite side here because I do think that maybe this is a bit of a reality check that Atlanta Rain needs to be better moving forward. And maybe they can actually build off Baby Bay leaving this team. And they can actually be like, hey, we can't just rely on Edison and Baby Bay to pop off all the time. How do we actually make this team good again? And how are we going to introduce some of this talent, like Sharp, 
like Erster into this roster and actually build around that. Because I think that if you look at Atlanta Rain season, it's been five months and they just kept doing this same old thing where it's Edison and Baby Bay in the roster and you rely on those two players and to pop off. And they're good I think to... that this could be a positive thing for Atlanta <laughs> where they're actually forced to adapt now to new circumstances and they have something to build on. So like the peak with Baby Bay and Edison, we've seen that. It's time to rebuild and see if there's a different peak with a different set and mentality with this roster. I'm not going to lie. I'd be shocked if they hit a, another... If they hit a bigger peak than what it's they were. It's a rebirth, done. Matt. It's uh, a rebirth of the Atlanta Rain. I mean, your, your rebirth and halfway through the year, all we've seen is them beat the, <laughs> crap, beat the crap out of teams that we know they can beat the crap out of and then lose to other teams. Yeah, uh, it's time. You know, shake things up. Uh, I'd like to see them turn it around. And uh, I'd like to see probably Dogman step into more of a leadership role, right? Because when you thought about Atlanta Rain, you always thought about Baby Bay and Dogman, where both of those guys are just popping off going crazy. Yeah, uh, but you also have to gain that respect. I don't think that Dogman has necessarily played his role up to the level where you can, like, sort of, you know, lean on him as a leader the, of this the, team. The I think that there's the a lot of players... He's the best player. True, but you need to have some kind of respect for him. And, I mean, they probably certainly have that respect for him because, you know, he's a great teammate and he's vocal and a fun guy to be around. So he certainly has that respect. But I feel like this team they're all kind of have shaky performances and they need to figure something out from like a holistic standpoint. It's yeah. like a big picture thing because it's not going to be as easy to look to Dogman, put in a player and then just go and see what happens. You know, nah, it's going I, to be a big shift in mentality for this team. I think the biggest thing for Atlanta would be get a win against one of the top teams early on uh, yeah. once we start play again. Because I think if they can get a win against one of those top teams, they can really prove to themselves they can do without Baby Bay. Because I think if they come in, they lose a few games without him. Uh, you're just going to hear the talk about how impactful he was for them. Just get even louder. But uh, let us know in the comments what you think. Who should Atlanta's DPS be? How sad are you that Baby Bay is gone? We lose a ton of memes, a ton of personality with him being out of the league. It's sad to see him go. But... Uh, like, subscribe, and tune in for more head-to-heads. We'll see you soon.